told in the Gospel of Mark, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salam, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. The other Gospel writers relate the same story, although the details may vary. John in his Gospel has Mary Magdalene going to the tomb alone. Luke has Mary Magdalene and the other Mary at the tomb. Some have an angel in the tomb, others have an empty tomb. Nevertheless, regardless of how the details vary, what they found was the same, an empty tomb. The physical remains of Jesus, which were placed there after he had been taken from the cross, were gone. But where? Although St. John does not include the ascension in his gospel, the other three writers do, and we know from their renditions Jesus appeared numerous times between his resurrection and ascension to mainly his disciples and apostles. Sometimes in recognizable form, other times he was not recognized until he performed a certain act or said words that set him apart. When at the sepulcher, Mary Magdalene thought him to be the gardener until he called her name, at which point she reached out to touch him and was told not to cling to him. After all, Jesus did tell his disciples and us that he would be with us until the end of time. And so he is. He is near us, with us, sitting next to us, and walking with us every step of our earthly journey. Both Luke's and Mark's Gospels tell us of Jesus appearing to two disciples walking the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Mark's much shorter rendition mentions this appearance occurred on the same day as the resurrection. Luke's longer rendition doesn't state the day, but places it in the same time frame as his appearance to Mary Magdalene. Luke mentions one of the two was Cleopas, and tradition suggests other was Cleopas' wife. They were returning home, most likely disappointed at the events of the past few days. Jesus, who they were anticipating to set up an earthly kingdom, had been crucified as a common criminal, and now his body was missing. These events were discouraging to them, and they were discussing their meaning and how these events pertain to the Hebrew Scriptures. When Jesus appeared walking with them, but they did not recognize him, and Jesus seemed to be unaware to them of the events which occurred the preceding days. While walking, Jesus explained Scripture to them. 
upon arriving at Emmaus, they ask Jesus to join them for dinner. At this point, Jesus took the bread and cup, blessed them, and broke the bread and gave it to them to eat, and through these signs they realized who he was. Do we recognize Jesus being active in our lives, or do we wait until some indication is sent to us? Jesus is walking with us, taking us by the hand every moment of our life, but very rarely does he hit us over our head with a bolt of lightning for us to realize he is there and what his will is for us. Although we should pray daily for the grace to discern, choose, and do God's will, what we finally choose is up to us. Next, the scene shifts to the upper room. A week later, in John's account, we are told that the disciples are locked in the upper room out of fear. Disciple indicates there are more than the twelve apostles, and most likely Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene were also present, all but Thomas. Locked there in fear, after all, Jesus had been crucified. The Jewish people might not have been completely calmed down yet, and this group here in the room were the band of Jesus' main followers and those who were given the authority to continue his mission. Then out of nowhere came Jesus in their midst, the doors remaining locked, greeting them with, Peace be with you. In other words, do not fear, I am with you. Then he showed those gathered his hands, feet, and side, and breathed on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Luke states in his account, they gave him a piece of baked fish to eat. This was done to show them the reality of his presence among them. When the disciples related this event to Thomas, that Jesus was truly risen and they had seen him, Thomas did not believe them. Thomas, in essence, tells them, unless I see him with my own eyes, I can't believe he has risen and is with us. A week passes, and the disciples are gathered again in the upper room, the doors again locked, but this time not in fear. Presumably, after receiving the Spirit the week before, they were full of joy and excitement. Thomas is with them. Jesus again appears in their midst, not through the door. Rather, he just comes into view among them, again addressing them with, Peace be with you. Imagine Thomas' amazement when he sees and hears Jesus, and Jesus approaches and confronts him with, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas did as he was requested by Jesus. Placing his hand in Jesus' side, Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God. To which Jesus replied with the question, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. It is faith, not sight, that matters. Jesus might have been referring to us and this generation with this remark. From history, we know Jesus walked the earth as truly God and truly human, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, forgiving sins, that he died on the cross and rose again, beginning the establishment of his kingdom while he was among us. But do we believe he is still among us in spirit, continuing his kingdom work? Do we live by faith that totally trusts in him and turns our lives over to him, believing he is with us right now, 
sitting in the car next to us, walking in the store with us, listening to us as we speak with him, taking every minute of our lives and directing that moment. Some people post little signs on their mirror, refrigerators, or computers reading, You are here. This may be somewhat unusual, but it reminds them Jesus is with them at all times and everywhere. How is our faith? Do we need proof as Thomas did? Or can Jesus say to us, Blessed are you who have not seen and believed? Thank you.